Okay. Good thing they swapped rooms because I'm pretty sure that that one's full. So, um, <laughs> hello everyone. Um, my name is Magda and uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, motivations that designers have behind making decisions and I'm going to try to prove to you that it's not just to piss off developers. Um, I work at a company com called Polydia. You've probably seen a couple of us around already. There's quite a few speakers. And um, I'm part of the creative team. I am, I am a user interface designer. And by education, I am a product designer, which is sort of my legacy sketches are in the background. Um, our team is six people. We all work together. We, we kind of have a full stack approach, meaning we start projects very early and then run with them all the way to implementation, but sometimes that changes and varies and we come in at different stages. So um, why am I making this talk? Uh, we at Palladia, we work very closely with developers. We sit under one roof, we, um, we sit in mixed teams, um, we discuss everything from the start of the process, we, we get everyone involved to get everyone's opinion. So uh, I feel like we have it a little easier because we, we understand each other very well, we know each other very well, so we, we can um, sort of assume everybody's best intentions. But I know that, I know that sometimes these separate camps form in a lot of companies and um, and sometimes there can be a little bit of bad blood between the two so um, that's why I want to that's why I want to talk about it and also because um, when creating products we at Polydia we create software products we create mobile apps um, but you know there's all kinds of products that you can make and um, there are three main powers that sort of come into play when you're making a product it's business technology and design design meaning more like the user or user experience or what everything that the user um, comes in touch with when they buy, feel, experience the product. And um, for example, you can take any product, a running shoe, um, you will have all of these three powers. So you will have someone making, calling the business shots, so making sure that this is cheap to produce, that it makes money, that you can market it, that people actually want to buy it, so that you can pay the people who work for you. You will have designers who will go out and see you know, what people's needs are. Do they want comfortable shoes? Do they want lightweight shoes? Or do they want no shoes at all? And then you have technology, which is the people making sure that you have a feasible production process and that, you know, the factory understands the spef specifications and everything like that. And so, personally, I know that there are people that have different opinions, but I feel that it's best for everyone when one person represents one separate agenda. So you avoid conflict of interest. So when you're a designer, you do design work. You don't think about, um, well obviously you think about technology, but you don't call the shots on the other fields because then you start thinking in limitations instead of in possibilities. So um, this is also important when making software and making mobile apps that the designer focuses on things that they do best, on things that they know about, and not on other fields like how are we going to market this or is this, you know, starting to think in limitations, can I actually code this? So what is the design agenda? What is our, what do we want? What are, um, what do we care about? Again, you can take the circle and you can sort of bring it back to tech, bring it back to the software industry and put the, change the labels a little bit and you get product design and engineering. So product is everyone on the product team, the managers, the, the, the project managers, the product owners, um, you know, everyone who comes up with, with what the product is going to be, what the specification is. Design obviously is, is all kinds of things from interface, graphics, motion, interaction, all these things, and then um, engineering is, you know, the developers, which is probably most of you. How many of you are developers? All right, not a, the rest is over there. That's cool. Um, I was expecting that. Um, so. Who the hell is a product designer? Because sometimes you come across this term, oh, I am a product designer. I myself call myself a product designer a lot of the time. And it's actually someone who's on this little green patch over there who does the graphics and does the interactions, but is also involved earlier at the, m at the time when we're specifying, um, specifying the products, discovering user needs, and stuff like that. So when today, 
when I refer to designers, I will mostly refer to designers who do have some influence on the early stages. I know that there are a lot of bigger companies where this is completely separate, so you will have a specialized product owner who will call all of the who will call all of the shots on user stories, on backlog and stuff like that. And um, and the designer will only be there to draw the icons and draw the the interface. But um, we actually at Paladia we, we're a lot smaller, so we have we work across different fields and we call a lot of the shots on the product as well. We work closely with clients and we wor work with the users as well. So when I refer to a designer today, I'm mostly going to be referring to product designers. Um, so what are some of the tasks that designers do? Well, you have, you know, general user interface design, which is all of the things related to the interface. It can be icons, it can be the layout, information architecture. So mostly, as I said, in smaller companies. But sometimes you split it up and you'll have user experience design, very fashionable at the moment. Everyone wants to be a UX designer. Uh, so they ask, is the app easy to use? Is the user going to be comfortable using it? Is it going to be useful? Then you'll have visual design, which is obviously the people who make things look amazing. And they're the ones who are experts on, on shapes and colors and, and the ways that people see and the ways that people experience um, you know, visuals. And then um, interaction designers, animations, is this, you know, this going to help the user or is this going to obstruct the user? Sometimes right now we have this trend of over-animating things and that the whole interface has to be crazy and you know, the menu has to bounce in and then slide in and then fade in as well and you know sometimes that's not really the best way to go because the user might want to do something else and not look at this every single time they open the menu um, so interaction designers should be concerned with whether animations help the user or not um, information architects which can be a really obscure term and people rarely understand what it really means but it's mostly about helping users find what they're looking for and make information easily available for them, information that they want to see. Um, product design, as I said, which is more about concerned with the context and with how products fit into the general lives of users, and then service designers who look at bigger pictures like ecosystems that products sit in, and they think about points of t where the user touches with the, with the product, with the brand. So they do a, a lot of on the bigger picture. So, um, look, what's, what do these things have in common? Well, users. They're all concerned with the users. They're all concerned with what do these people at the end want? What do they like? Um, how do they experience things? And so our agenda as designers, can you wait? Can you, okay, yeah, sure. No, go ahead. Well, that's true, yes. It's not, this sentence is not connected with users. Some of these, yes, well, I'm sorry. Um, but, but also, as I said, this is about making things pleasurable to the users. Um, developers. Um, <laughs> anyways, designers' agendas is mostly about representing the user and thinking about what they want and being really the user's advocate because they are rarely personally involved in the development process. And so when talking about, um, when talking about user needs and, user, um, and users in general, I want to talk about goals. What kind of goals do people who are involved in the product development process have? First of all, obviously, to have a product development process, we need to have the product people, the product managers and the, the owners and the visionaries. And they are really concerned with, hey, how do we make money with this so that we can run our company, so that we can pay all of us who make the, the things, and so we can go back home and you know feed our families. Um, and then sometimes they want to be famous. They want to make things that are innovative disruptive and you know all of that um, which has become a little bit washed out right now because everyone's saying it but it's but still at the heart every person who who thinks about making a product wants to make something that's new and, and a little bit better um, and most of the time they want to do good I mean there are obviously people who want to make products that kill other people um, or or harm them but uh, but I feel I'm a little bit naive like that but I feel like most people want to do something that's good and uh, an array of other things. Um, engineering, well, I could list some goals here, but I was really afraid that I was gonna get it wrong and that everyone's gonna be, you know, outraged and leave. So um, 
whatever you feel that engineers have as their goals, please imagine it on the slide. Um, and then what do designers have as goals? Um, you know, they, they want, we want to see people using our stuff. We want to go out, there's nothing more exciting than going out on the street and seeing your logo on something or somebody using an app that you designed. It's, this is what brings us real pleasure. And so to achieve that, we mostly want to make useful stuff because people don't want to use stuff that's not useful. Um, we want to make other designers jealous. It's very important to think of things before they think of them. Um, we want to we want to see our work produced. We really want to design things for the proverbial drawer because that just doesn't make a lot of sense to us. Um, we want to make nice looking things most of the time, unless the brief is to make ugly looking things, then that too. Um, <laughs> we want to we want to make a change. We want to we want to better people's lives, make them easier, you know, and so on and so on. A big part of our dreams is to make everyone aware of the fact that design is good, that design helps people and that it's important, that it's not just, you know, putting the paint finish at the end. Um, and we want to have fun on the way, obviously. And so um, everybody's goal really should be making users happy because without users, we're out of jobs most of the time. Even if you, may, even if you say, oh, but I do B2B and I, pr I make things for other people to build products, I don't work for users. Well, you do because the people who, the other people, the other B in your B2B, they're also users and they also have needs and they also want to have a good experience. So really, everything that we make for someone else has users and we should all be concerned with whether they're happy. And um, actually, if, if any of you have been to uh, Carolina's talk earlier, um, she talked about um, she talked about the fact I completely lost my train of thought. I'm so sorry. Um, yes. Okay. Good. User experience. What is user experience? Um, so, so part of the user experience is, for example, whether the software runs smoothly, whether it crashes, whether it, um, you know, whether it's fast and efficient. So that's so everyone really should be concerned with whether the user experience is good. That's what you talked about. Um, and so th there are a lot of things that users care about. They care about, you know, doing things quickly and effortlessly. They hate having to having to um, to put effort into things. For example, we did some user testing recently with a group of American teenagers, um, aged 15 to 19, and they, um, for them, the biggest nightmare. They, th this is about we're making an app for an existing software product, and they were like, oh my god, I have to like I have to go and do it on a desktop computer like at my dad's office and like I have to log in with a password. It's ridiculous, it's so hard. And it was just like, okay, well maybe you're a bit e exaggerating a bit, but for them it was like the biggest nightmare using a desktop, like they wanna do it on their phone. So, you know, it's users have all kinds of dreams and they think about whether their data is safe and they are worried that everyone wants to read their emails and their, you know, their private details about their cats. Cats are very important. Um, and so they think about a lot of things and they worry about a lot of things and they care about a lot of things when thinking about your app or your product. But you know what they don't care about? Our work. They don't care whether we had it easy, whether we had fun along the way. They simply don't care and it's really tough and it's really hard sometimes, but ultimately, if they don't like what they see on the screen, they won't care about our products. So the sensible way is to look at, you know, we, we most, most of us have clients or if you work for yourself and, and you have your own product, then you're, you are your own client. But um, every product has a business part. So the sensible way is to look at business goals and then to look at user goals and then see where they overlap and make things that make, you know, that makes the users happy but also realizes our goals. So coming back to the running shoe, if we know that users want lighter shoes, then we should make lighter shoes to make money because that covers both of our goals. Sometimes, unfortunately, clients, some clients, um, want to make that instead. They don't, they think, yeah, well, okay, let's make the light shoes, but also let's make them light up with LEDs because we have this business partner who makes LEDs and it's going to make everyone really happy. And it's like, well, okay, because ultimately they're the ones who are paying us, so we can't say no. So um, sometimes it's good to remember that you can educate clients and you can tell them, hey, look, let's make this, let's make this. And when they say, let's make this, you know, at the end of the day, some, at some point you have a deadline and you just have to make things. So um, 
Some clients, unfortunately, do insist on things that are not directly related to user needs, um, and sometimes that makes them fail really bad at the end, um, which we've seen a couple of times. But you know, you can't save them from that if that's what they want to do. Um, and so it's good to remember that we are the ones, we designers, are the ones who talk to clients and who, you know, clients make us do things. They make us design things for them. And unfortunately, sometimes uh, there's a situation where you know the client comes in and they're like, "I want Facebook," or they're like, "Oh, oh, I know, I know, I want something like." Twitter and it's like you know what actually may maybe start smaller maybe we should just do like one single service and not like something that people have built over 12 years or 10 years or whatever it was um, and so then we're really proud and we're like look 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 we cut it down we're like we got it to this really small first milestone and the developer goes location-based search are you crazy like I'm not that's super hard and you're like oh come on like I worked so hard with the client on you know making the, having this make sense um, and I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to complain and generalize about all developers. Obviously, I'm just pointing out to you that um, you know sometimes it's good to think about the bigger picture and think about the fact that we're working on different fields and on different boundaries with different people. And sometimes what we've already achieved makes us really, really proud. And just to empathize with that. Um, so. What are some strategies to when designers come in and they're like, oh, location-based search, we need to build it because our users really, really want it. And you're like, mm, but it's so hard and it's going to take so much time. Um, we have, we've been working with developers for a while now and um, we're all very excited about figuring out ways to communicate better. And so we have come up with some strategies to reduce that. Um, there is a very small if. Um, if this is if your designers actually have influence on the scope and actually have influence on the products because if you have a product owner who calls all the shots please please don't blame your designers they're just drawing things and they they just have to do their job so um, but if if your designers do have influence on the product then um, there are a lot of ways in which you can talk to them um, the first and, and most important rule, which we have on our poster in our office, um, is to assume best intentions, which is kind of what my talk is about. I'm not trying to piss you off. I don't do this in spite of you. I do this for someone else, for users, for them to be happy. So, and, and this works in reverse, of course. All of this, what I'm saying, also applies to designer. Are there any designers in the room? Except for us, yes. Well, um, <laughs> you should also empathize with developers and um, and try to make life easier for them. But also remember that m mostly, you know, we're fighting our own corner. Developer experience, Developer experience exactly. Um, so assume best intentions. Most important rule. Um, second most important rule: talk. Talk to each other. It's not if you were <laughs> if you're in if you work in an office together, you can grab a whiteboard, you can grab some pens, and you can figure stuff out together. This is real. I didn't mock this up for this presentation. This is a flow that that um, I was the green line and my developer was the black line, and we figured this out together so that everyone understands and so that everyone can visualize what we're going to build. So because a lot of the time. Um, Surprises are what actually matter. So if someone is prepared that something's going to be big or hard to do, it's it's okay. But if you just throw it on them, um, it's really hard. So this is again talking about the two camps because sometimes I feel like um, designers and developers, if they work in separate companies or if they work freelance, a lot of the time it feels like there's a really high wall, like a brick wall, and there's someone on one side with a little package and they just like throw it over and then run so that they don't have to deal with the consequences. Um, and then the other person on the other side obviously feels as if there's just a ton of crap just falling on their heads. So let's not do that. Let's just break down the wall and talk to each other. Um, and there are some exercises that you can do to activities that you can do to um, support this. Um, one of them is uh, we we call scary versus awesome, which is a very professional name for a tool. Um, and um, and it's basically printing out all the wireframes for the app you know, for all the apps that you're building and then going through them and together with the developers as a team and putting some st little sticky dots on the places where you think, wow, that's going to be really awesome to build. I'm really excited about this feature. And then others, well, 
this could be hard, there could be a lot of pitfalls and stuff like that, which, which, um, which then in turn helps you optimize. So if you're a designer and you see that, you know, someone put a really scary dot on, on a feature that's important to you, you can talk about how maybe there's a really small change that you can do that makes it easier to implement. Or maybe you could build something else first so that they get into the rhythm of building the product and then put that at the end, the scary thing. Um, also, it's, it's really good to, to check before you say no um, as a developer to a designer because uh, we work with a lot of developers. At Polity, at least, we work in different teams. And sometimes we've done a project before where we've done a similar feature and then, you know, uh, you have the situation when you're like, oh, listen, um, I want to do filters in my in this photo app, and the developer's like, what? No, hell no, I'm not doing filters. Do you know Instagram? They have like an eight people team who works on the filters, and it takes them months to do one of them, and it like, no, hell no, like don't let's not do filters. And then and then you're like, oh, okay, fine. And then you go to another developer in your team. This is a real life story. I did this like a month ago. And then you're like, um, oh, listen. I scrapped the filters, I came up with a different feature, and they're like, what, filters are like super easy. And it's like, well, but, but you, fr but the other guy, like, what, what? And so it's really confusing, because I realize that a lot of you have different experience, and, it's, and that's cool, so let's just like, maybe if you have a bigger team, you can consult with other people, or, you know, you can just have a look at what the other options are, and, and then say no. Um, also, one of our favorites is to make trade-offs, uh, which is uh, basically saying, hey, I'll scrap that if you do that. So if we all look at the whole scope together and we as product people or, um, or product designers uh, prioritize what's really important for the user, and then you know, the developer says, oh, you know what, but this is really difficult, you'll say, okay, well listen, what if I scrap some of the less important things? And so then, you know, in one of the apps that we did recently, um, that was, that was, it was the photo issue, so you know, we scrapped the filters, and then instead we're gonna do something else. So it's easier for the developer, but it doesn't make that much of a difference for the user. So trade-offs are great. Um, and then, so in short, this whole presentation can really be summarized in, I really don't want to piss you off. I'm just fighting my corner because that's what I'm here to do. That's what I get paid to do. I'm, I, I am a user advocate. I care about users' needs. And you are there to care about technology and about whether the code is clean, whether it runs fast and whether it's a good quality product. So, you know, it's really, you can imagine it as a negotiation between two people and really three people when the product people come in and um, a negotiation of priorities and of difficulties and it all comes down to communicating. Thank you.